Hi everyone, Ken from Militia War Gaming Warriors, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up Black Powder in Tabletop Simulator so you and your friends during this difficult time can still play a game. So first things first, this is the main menu. Um, you want to click create because that's what you want to do, create a game. You want to create a single player game and, and I'll explain why in a minute. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to get presented with a screen like this. You won't have these load and save options. You'll have the workshop option here. And we're going to need a couple of things to actually make this work correctly. So if we click on the workshop, you can see I've got loads of different things downloaded here. Okay. All right. What you need to do three things you're going to want to download straight away is you're going to want to go browse and you're going to search the steam uh, library so black powder because that's what we want to play all right quite a few options here for like black powder stuff and um, what I would recommend you do straight away is you want to download Wellington's army at Waterloo you also want to download uh, Napoleon's army at Waterloo because that's uh, that's your British and French uh, you've also got um, different assets for different countries so you've got different maps here you can see you can see here black powder additional mods for units so you've got Austrians Prussians Russian Naples Sweden and this just gives you like a basic overview of all the different units and different models but I'll show you that in a bit um, so you've got those two downloaded and then you want to download this Waterloo starter set here uh, and this is done by first C uh, Lord Ford what you can do is you can click on these and you can see the different ones that he's uh, done. So he's done like Albion Triumphant as well, 17th August. Uh, that looks like it's first edition there. So once that's done, you're going to see it will all populate in here. So for me, you can filter. So if I go black, there you go, go black powder there. Okay, this is like all my black powder stuff that I've got downloaded. So first set I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the start set okay All right it will load everything in like this my yours might take a little bit longer depending on what your PC is like but pretty much these little tabs here you can see there's tablets okay if you open these it will take you to like the black powder original rule set so everything you need to start playing black powder more advanced players use scenery bag to make their own stuff okay All right that's fine you can delete anything in the game by just pushing delete over it, okay? Alright, as you can see here, there's already some units set up, right? Okay, there's already units set up. So you've got some French fusiliers, you've got some horses, um, and you've got a French general there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to delete all that straight away, okay? Deleted, okay? You're probably saying, why did you delete all those units? Because we only want this game, this board here as like a base. This is a 6x4 board. You can tell that by getting a ruler like that. And you can measure one corner to the other. So that's 48 inches, which is 4 foot. And then you've got 72 length weights. Okay. This is quite a nice board because these little panels here, you can take these off, which, um, which are quite nice. And it makes it into a much bigger table and you can play bigger games. But for what we're doing, we're going to leave it like that. So you can see here now we've got a plain board. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get some units onto the table. So this is where the other bits and bobs come up where I was talking to you about. So like I say there, what we're going to do is we're going to want to save this. So to save it, okay, you go to games, save and load. Okay, and I'm going to push save game and I'm going to save this as black powder game. Okay, it's just what I'm going to save as. You can name it whatever you like. Okay, so now I've got that there. Okay, so I will come back to that instance. Right, next thing I'm going to do is I want to play as the French. Okay, and I want to play against some British. All right, just because that's what I like doing. So I'll go back into my workshop tab. Black powder again. And you can see here I've got. Wellington's army there, and I've got Waterloo. Okay, so the French at Waterloo. So 
than Napoleon. Okay, so I'm going to go load. Right, that's a lot of French. Okay. Right, you can see here with this one, the assets are already named. So you've got the 1st Battalion, the 8th. Uh, you've got the 2nd Battalion. And you've got the 29th line. You've got 29th, 9th. You've got everything here, 7th Hussars. And it's all named, okay, which is really cool. All of the colonels and division leaders are all named as well. So all that info is there. So you can find, I know Martin likes the 28th, doesn't he? So there they are there. 28th, 1st and 2nd Battalion with the 105th. And uh, there's their uh, commander. It gives you their strategy rating. It gives you the foot artillery that were with it at Waterloo. So I'm pretty sure this is Nate, just Nate's core, as Martin pointed out to me, because there's Nate. So people will probably know a bit different to me. But what I want to do, so I want to use uh, free, troop, uh, free, bit, free brigades. Okay, so I want to have a cavalry brigade, and I want to have two infantry brigades okay so what you can do is literally go along pick what you like so you've got lancers here first lancers second lancers okay all right so i'm gonna go with these guys here so all you have to do is you have to make these guys into a object you might say what is object so objects are any sort of like assets so i'm going to call these assets in the game uh, that you can place anywhere throughout so if you want to move these from this save to another save you have to save them as an object so you highlight them all you see they're all highlighted yellow okay and then there's a save object button there so you can save it as the fifth light cavalry division general whatever you want to call it yeah all right just for purposes and ease of finding i'm going to call it one okay i'm just going to save it as one all right and it's saved in my root folder okay so that is my cavalry uh, brigade so I'm going to do a light infantry brigade, which are these guys just here. Okay, you've got the 10th, 2nd battalion, 1st battalion, uh, and then you've got the 5th there. So, But I would like a light infantry brigade. All right, so that there. Right click. Okay, and then I'm going to name that 2. All right, and then finally, I want another brigade. And I do want these as infantry, so if I go into like main core infantry over here, you've got regiments of chasseurs, you've got a uh, old guard over here, you've got some middle guard, and you've got young guard just there. But I'm just going to go for standard uh, infantry brigade again. Okay, so I'm going to select all of those again. And funny enough, I'm going to name this one three. But again. You can name this whatever you like. And I'm going to save it. Okay, so I've got my three brigades there with their colonels. But then I'm going to want an overall general. So I could select uh, a divisional commander. Uh, or I could go for Ney himself. Um, I'm going to go with just like... I'm going to go for uh, Jean Baptiste. I'm going to go for him. Alright, okay. So, I'm going to save object. And I'm going to name him 4. All right. Okay, so there's all my French. Okay, so now you've got the basic understanding uh, how to save objects. The British is exactly the same, so I'll just load the British up so you can see them because it is someone has done some seriously serious amount of work on this. Um, it's really, really, really impressive. Okay, so here are the British, and again, uh, exactly the same setup. So you've got core and uh, fits and bobs like that and then you just end up saving three of these uh, which I'll do now but I will see you back at the other table and uh, we'll get it all set up okay now we're loaded back in we're gonna set up like models for each side so this side would be the British and this side would be the French so all we have to do is get these objects that we saved into the game so very simple objects saved objects and then you can look for them or you can search so there's one there that's one okay so that's going to load in now all right that's in object two let's stick there that's going to load in okay they're a bit close to the edge there let's just move them back a little bit okay object two if you notice just here you will get this occasionally okay model some models will link in like that first thing i do you can see them going off on one there right what i tend to do because most of it's set like this. 
they go to toggle and there's a snap function for models I turn that off so anything I've got saved object wise I will turn that off so I need to just try and separate these two out there you go okay and I'm doing this just by holding the uh, left mouse button and I can move everything around and hold it it will, it will glass a bit but to flip objects you just push F and then to control them it's just Q and E like this okay so then we can stick them back in there where they need to live okay one more thing I suggest you do you've got this lift height here I turn that right down so it doesn't lift far off so it's got less room to drop so less things to go wrong but it will still go over objects okay so they're all they're all the snapped options off, and I'll do that the same with these. Snap, turn that off. You're probably wondering why I'm not just selecting it all like this, because as you can see, it will only select a maximum number of objects at once, so you, you'd have to do them separately. So I'll just do them unit by unit. So let's go with number three now. Okay. Right, you can see again, they're just floating there, which is fine. It's not a problem, because all you got to do is select them and then just drop them down. And you can move them individually but again you've got the snapped object toggle take snap off that's like a major thing you need to do turn snap off okay definitely turn snap off it drives drives me mad so that's the french okay and then do the british quickly i save these as b1 all right See, it snaps on, turn that off, snap off, and then just rotate like so, like that. V2, I wish you could turn the snap off automatically. There might be a way, but I don't know of it to be fair. Just loading in again. Okay, right click, toggle, snap off, and then you can just move all them along, and then V3. B4. I picked Picton. Because why not? Okay, so toggles snap again. And then snap again for that. There is a place for snap, but it's just not with miniatures. Because um, you just get issues. So like those two when they come down originally were. Okay, it's not a problem. You just separate them out. And then if you get if you ever get an object like this doing now. And you're like, oh god, that's not that's not separating at all. Okay. What you can do, there's a couple of options. So you can either try and flip it, just so it moves separately like that, or you can clone it as well, um, which is not really much of a problem. Clone things, it's quite straightforward. Again, all you have to do is select what you want. So if I wanted to clone that, right click, clone. And then it would pop up there. You can see the highlight of it there. I'm not going to do it because um, there's no need at the moment. So, yes. Okay, so that's all the units that are in the game now, okay? All right, you can see model-wise, okay? They're not, the, you know, they're not they're not bad. They're not superbly amazing, but, you know, they're playable. It is a playable system, um, which we all can enjoy, and especially when we can't get any actual gaming in. So... You can see these are set up in line. If I wanted to move them again, I could just select individual units. If I wanted to put them in column, um, you can just you know just move them about like this. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward as well. Um, you can set them up exactly how you want to set them up. Right. So you're probably looking at this and thinking, oh, that looks really boring. Um, and you'd be right, it is quite boring. But you've got things like terrain in here. So in this bag here, you've got roads again drop the road out okay and like again you can just clone roads and then you can select these roads individually so you've got roads here and you can rotate them q and e again exactly the same as the models you've got other bits and bobs you can see like bases hills rocky hills you know this is all stuff these are all assets um, within so they're like bags so like you search these okay certain bits and bobs like this you get this from time to time where assets are missing if you get those white bubbles they don't always appear um, or they could be downloading so like there's there's a hill there 
got other hills and you can just you can go throughout all this and you can just pick what you want or you can find a pre-made table um, which you know you can do it on that but I've just done this just to show people you know you can set it all up but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna load a game from myself and Martin we were playing and I'll show you what you can do once you get like a little bit competent because we've only played a couple of games and you spend a bit of time making a train so I'll load that now and uh, I'll show you what it looks like so guys as you can see this is really straightforward the table looks great uh, you can get situations of where for example when you put new objects down they'll be unlocked okay so you can see it's highlighted white if you push it out on it it means it's locked it means it can't be picked up basically uh, so you're not going to pick it up by mistake so you can lock that hill down there um, but it's really really simple guys honestly everything's here that you need you just need your own rule book now and uh, you've got your shaking tokens in there you can use whatever you like or disorder you've got dice tower you've got dice in there you can use what we tend to use um, where is it so if we go to dice we use a dice roller so there's a US Marine Corps one here for bolt action you can see and if I just select a dice out of here so draw draw a dice there we go right, all you need to do put the dice on it like that like so over the icon select however many dice you want to roll so you want to roll I don't know four dice and you can just literally click that and it will roll them for you and give you the total and it will leave that there until you clear it until you hit it again and it will roll different numbers so you got four again if you only want to roll three the next time or two or whatever you want to do there you go you can turn the print off so if you don't want it to do its thing but with anything in this game in tabletop simulator you can rescale things okay this is all set to like 28 mil okay but if you really wanted to right look at this you can scale it right up or you can scale it right down if you want to be really really tiny with it and play like six mil you can do that if you want to play six mil games whatever you want to play you can do in tabletop simulator but guys this here was just a quick overview of how to get you a game into black powder there's so many more things within tabletop simulator that you can do I hope you guys have found this interesting. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer any of them. I uh, really like your feedback and what you think of the video. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you again very soon and bye-bye for now.